We have to know how to navigate through our feelings so our feelings don't disturb our focus and our relationship with others. everybody this is CJ Jackson again coming from the breadcrumbs and I hope and pray that your day is going outstanding in the Lord because he is worthy to be praised on this particular day amen if you have been with us and you've been a part of watching a lot of our videos and segments we've been focusing primarily in two different divisions we've been focusing on relationships with God and relationships with one another or relationships with others and today we're going to focus on relationship with others but we're going to have a series yes folks we're going to have a series that I believe is going to be paramount and is going to be significant as it relates to relationships as a whole and it is going to be entitled keys to a healthy relationship keys to a healthy relationship and the number one thing that we're going to be talking about that is so important in a relationship is communication. Communication. We all know that in order to have a vital relationship, you got to communicate. You got to be able to have some speaking and some talking that's being delivered on a regular basis. In fact, there are three different divisions that we're going to talk about when it comes to communication today. We're going to talk about number one, speaking and talking. Then number two, we're going to talk about feelings. And number three, we're going to talk about living. Okay? Because whether you knew it or not, even how you live is actually a demonstration of how you're communicating. Actually, how you feel is a statement of communication as well. Amen. So we're going to be going into some, some, some territory that may be uncharted to some, but I'm hoping it will cause us to have a fresh understanding from God's word as it deals with communication. First and foremost, communication comes from the word koinonia. In fact, the word communication is really derived from the word to be in common or to have in common. Communication means common, or I should say koinonia means common. It means communication, and it also means community. All of those words are derived from the word koinonia, which means fellowship. And fellowship means basically to be in the right capacity with others. It means to have an attachment, to have a connection. That's what fellowship is all about. So when we understand that communication is really describing connection, we're really going to understand a whole lot more about communication. But let's look at these things as we talk about, first and foremost, speaking and talking. The passage I want to focus on is Colossians 4 and verse 6, and the Bible says, Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Notice that the scripture says that your communication should be seasoned with salt. Salt is a preservator. It preserves. It is something that not only makes things fresh, but it also makes things to where virtually they're going to be in a capacity where things are going to have flavor. So we have to understand that when we communicate and we share, we need to make sure that our communication is fresh. In other words, it's bringing something that is going to elevate, that is going to inspire, that is going to encourage, that is going to edify. Communication should have that in it. Number two, we're going to look at feelings. Because I believe there is a misunderstanding about us being able to express our feelings. There are two ways to express your feelings. Amen. You can express your feelings in a healthy way, 
and you can express your feelings in an unhealthy way. If you may recall the story of, of Cain and Abel, and Cain was in a situation where his gift was not accepted by God. And because his gift was not accepted by God, he decided that he was so angry he was going to murder his brother. And whether we know it or not, really what was happening was his anger was really a byproduct of his jealousy, of his envy, and of his selfishness over that which he was dealing with with his feelings. And his inability to deal with his feelings caused him to have a heart condition that literally allowed him to murder his brother. The Bible says that out of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whatever I say oftentimes is equivalent of what's on my heart. So my feelings actually do come from my heart. My feelings and how I express my anger, my frustration, my aggravation, all of those things are feelings. And we have to know how to navigate through our feelings so our feelings don't disturb our focus and our relationship with others. Amen. Third point that I want to focus on is living, living. And I'm going to turn to the book of Proverbs. And the Bible says in Proverbs 16 and verse 21, 16 and verse 21, the Bible says this. It says, folly, let me get that right. Proverbs 16 and verse 21 the wise in heart will be called prudent, and sweetness of the lips increasing learning. So what we're understanding here in terms of talking about the ability to have a healthy relationship with living, living means that you operate in a way that you use wisdom in how you are going to communicate with those that you are in contact with. In fact, you are open to it. One of the things that is important as we learn to live out how we communicate is to be a person that is coachable and that listens well. Because we have to realize the importance of our communication goes real deep. The book of James says that out of the mouth flows cursings and blessings. And then he says, this ought not be so. So in other words, we should be a people that have an ability to know that how we live is also a statement of what we are communicating. I pray today that everyone that's been a listener is aware of everything that's happening in your life that you are speaking, that you are feeling, that you are living. And that you understand all of it is communicating. May God bless you. And may you always embrace that you were born to be a blessing.